Hello everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, Meepo Logistics is reporting that as soon as fulfillment is complete for Solomon Kane Wave 2, the hub will not be making any deliveries for three days as they conduct a manual count of the inventory they have on hand. During this time, we'll still be able to enter orders into their system, but nothing will ship out until the inventory count is complete. We'll have a clearer time frame on exactly when this will be happening once we know when they'll be close to finishing fulfillment for Solomon Kane, and of course, we'll keep you posted. Getting back to a bit of normal after the Rise of the Necromancers campaign completion, I'll be scheduling both of my videos today for later this week on Thursday and Friday, so be on the lookout for those and make plans now to be there. JT and I recorded the Darkest Dungeon finale video last week, so I'll be getting to editing that this week, and I'll hope to have it up for you on Saturday. We have big updates for Darkest Dungeon the board game, Six Siege the board game, Hell the Last Saga today, as well as shipping updates for Joan of Arc, Solomon Kane, and Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2, so let's get to it. For Joan of Arc today, the Irish backer pledges are currently being delivered. For our UK backers, the container is scheduled to hit port on Thursday, January 27th. So your product should start delivering the first week of February for those that are still missing orders and items. For our Canadian backers, most should have their orders now. The warehouse in Canada did inform us that they are missing 68 packages that were supposed to come from Fulix. We're investigating this now and we will have an update for all of you very soon. Additionally, please realize that Joan of Arc 1.5 was largely a multi-parcel shipment. So if your initial shipment doesn't have everything in it, that might simply mean that you have yet to receive other parcels that contain your missing items. Once fulfillment is reported by the hubs as being completely done, we'll be able to begin accepting replacement order requests. When that time comes, we'll make sure we make an update that alerts everyone that those requests can now be processed. For Solomon Kane today, just a brief note for a Wave 2 shipping update. Meepo Logistics started delivering pledges yesterday, and Spiral Galaxy expects their container to hit port on January 27th, with delivery set to begin right after they complete Joan of Arc fulfillment. Quartermaster Logistics containers were supposed to hit port yesterday, January 24th. Once they pass customs, they'll head straight to the hub, and we'll update you soon on when deliveries could begin. The VR distribution container for our backers in Australia and New Zealand, which also contains Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 pledges, is expected to arrive next month. And we'll update you with more information once we hear more back from our shipping liaison. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, just a brief note for a shipping update as well. Meepo Logistics containers are expected to hit the hub on February 8th, 9th, and 10th. Address verification emails will begin showing up as soon as they clear customs. Quartermaster Logistics containers are expected to hit port during the first week in February. So in a similar fashion, as soon as they clear customs, backers can expect to start seeing address verification emails from them. For our backers in Australia and New Zealand, VR Distribution is expecting its container to hit port next month and is also carrying Solomon Kane Wave 2 pledges. Once we have more information to share from our shipping liaison, we most certainly will, so stay tuned. The whole Hell The Last Saga team together wishes you all the very best New Year. We are most certainly working hard to make sure that one of your wishes will be fulfilled, to discover what lies behind the disappearance of King Hawken, and to write an unforgettable saga. Concerning how the project is progressing, here's the latest development snapshot. From a writing point of view, we are doing a second pass on the last song. Its writing requires an additional effort as this final episode depends on different conclusions of previous songs. 
several alternative endings that follow in the last song will reward your journey no matter which way you chose. There are no winners or losers in hell, but there are different destinies. Following playtesting feedback, our developers are adjusting some of the late campaign settings and our designers are making some final iconic changes, mainly to fix the latest usability issues we encountered. These playtesting sessions have been so beneficial to us in terms of proofreading, user interface feedback, and general feeling that we are going to launch a final external playtesting campaign with dedicated groups and solo players testing the whole saga at once based on the latest version corrected after feedback from the first external playtesters. Concerning a roadmap for the future, we've decided to separate the Hell delivery into two separate language waves for many of the same logistical reasons as we have given for both Darkest Dungeon and Six Siege. Additionally, however, there is a huge amount of localization and localized testing work that follows. During the Kickstarter campaign, we had estimated and planned a single narrative booklet with about 600 paragraphs. Today, the latest count is more than 1,500 paragraphs, comprised of 300,000 words, spread over no less than 13 booklets. This is almost three times more than our estimates at the time. To be consistent with our ambition and to deliver equivalent versions in terms of quality, we'll simply have to spend more time on some languages. We will therefore deliver a first wave in English and French pledges, which represents about 16,000 cumulative units, and then a second wave, which will cover Spanish, German, and Italian pledges, accounting for nearly 3,600 cumulative units. So how will we get to delivering wave one? March 2022 will see the manufacturing of molds and prototypes, while April 2022 will see the manufacturing of miniatures and plastic tokens. As usual, the minis will be a mix of PVC and ABS, and yes, you can expect to see pictures when the time comes. May 2022 will see the delivery of final files to the factory as the first steps in the production process. And then June through August 2022 will see the mass manufacturing and packaging of the product to include the PPCs and MPCs at their respective times. And then September through October 2022 will see the shipment from China and the beginning of fulfillment. Details of Wave 2 will come as soon as we get all the feedback from our localization partners. We can't yet estimate the exact timeline involved, but know that all the plastic production for these other language versions will already be done, and that only the print will be delayed. As soon as we have more definitive information, we'll dedicate an update to sharing that information. With all this being said, we are going to postpone the closing of the Pledge Manager to the end of April 2022. Thank you so much for your support, and we promise to make hell everything that it can be. For Darkest Dungeon today, as promised, we have more information on the production of the language versions. We've cross-checked our schedule, and this is how we will proceed, unless, of course, there's another force majeure at work, in which case we'll keep you posted. Last week in the newscast video, we informed you that we were planning on doing two waves, with the first wave including the gameplay-related material for the English Crimson Pledge, including the applicable stretch goals with the playmat, the sleeves, the heirloom chest, and everything else coming in Wave 2. Wave 2 will include the English gameplay-related material for the Cove, Wield, Warrens, and Color of Madness expansions, as well as the entire game in all the other languages. After that script was written and newscast got published on Tuesday, we made the decision that we could try to get the French files into production a bit sooner than originally thought. So with the What's Up Wednesday update on Kickstarter, we let our French backers know that we were going to try to do this, and it still really isn't set in stone that we'll be able to get it done. This change of plan was perceived as a hidden French wave of production and deemed somewhat nefarious by some of our backers. In truth, we were simply trying to do as much as we could 
to get the product into as many of our backers' hands as quickly as possible. We do apologize as we recognize that we could have been a little bit more upfront with our aspirations and we're sorry that it looked a bit shady. We're going to try to get the Wave 1 French files to the factory by the end of May 2022. If we do, it's possible that the product can be on the boat sometime in September 2022. The other languages in Wave 2, because of the extra work involved in coordinating with localization partners, is planned for being sent to the factory by the end of August 2022, which means that it's possible that they will be on the boats by November or December 2022. For the moment, we are sending the English Wave 1 files to the factory at the end of the month, and we are on track for doing just that. This means that it's possible that English Wave 1 product will be on the boat in June 2022. Now, with all that being said, we're also announcing the closure of the Pledge Manager, which will close on Wednesday, February 16th. This is your last chance to get the game at these prices, as the overstock that will go on our eShop will reflect an increase in price as well as a VAT charge. If you haven't filled out your pledge, make sure you head to GameFound, fill in your shipping details, and pay your remaining balance. Otherwise, your pledge will not be considered closed and will then not be shipped. Thanks so much for your support and understanding as we seek to navigate the water towards fulfillment. For Six Siege today, we have two announcements to make. The first one is the closure of the Pledge Manager, which will now close on Wednesday, March 2nd. This is your last chance to get the game at these prices, as the overstock that will go on our eShop after fulfillment is complete will reflect an increase in price as well as a VAT charge. If you haven't filled out your pledge, make sure you head on to GameFound, fill in your shipping details, and pay your remaining balance. Otherwise, your pledge will not be considered closed and will not be shipped. The second announcement is also very important and has to do with the production of the game. As you know, we have been very expedient with the timeline of the game. And we're going to be ready with the English and French files at the end of January, and they will be sent to the factory to initiate the first steps of production. However, we cross-checked the production schedule with the factory, and they informed us that they will not be able to handle the production of the whole game at once. For this reason, we've made the decision to split the game into two waves. This was a very tough decision to make, but unfortunately, this is the new normal for factory and production capacity. As COVID and the Omicron variant is still very disruptive to global scheduling and continues to push things back. As you know, the factories haven't been operating at full capacity because of power outages and COVID measures, and there is still a shipping crisis too, which means that congestion has been created in the factories and ports, which, paired with the everlasting coronavirus pandemic, has led to a huge disruption of all production scheduling. This is not something that affects only us or only our industry. The impact of this crisis is severe in several industries already. Factories now take double the time to produce what is sent to them because they're still not operating at full capacity and are still required to take COVID-related precautions. We therefore needed to make sure that what we send to the factory will be produced in an acceptable timeline and it is of a volume that they can handle based on the resources that they have both in terms of manpower and the influx of raw material. Therefore, we've decided to split the content into two waves as follows. Wave 1 will be all the English and French content, and Wave 2 will be all the other languages and all their content. Now, we understand how you feel and that for our international backers, this is not the news you probably wanted to hear. Um, as backers ourselves, we know the feelings towards a company that doesn't keep their word and make mistakes. But this is not the case here. Changes happen daily, and we're trying to organize production in unprecedented circumstances. The factories simply can't handle huge quantities right now because they do not have the manpower they used to have before the pandemic. Additionally, the cardboard crisis has led not only to a huge increase in paper cost, but also to a raw material shortage, which led us to pre-book our materials shortly after the campaign so that we could keep it reserved. 
the Omicron variant is making it excessively difficult to have things on ships and extra delays are caused by freight carriers. This is something that changes daily, making it extremely difficult to operate and to plan. We're adjusting how we operate uh, to anticipate these delays, but often we're relegated to having to wait and see. Uh, we will keep you posted about everything as soon as we have more news, and that's a promise. From the bottom of our hearts, we at Mythic Games want to sincerely thank all of our backers. 2,798 of you have contributed to breathe unlife into this project. And of course, an even bigger thank you to Christopher and Thorbjörn from Sore Loser Games for trusting us with Rise of the Necromancers. This is the start of another journey, though. We're going to finish up the editing and production files of the game and then translate them into French before we can start production in earnest. We can already start with the back and forth with the factory regarding the miniatures. We're also going to open the pledge manager in the coming weeks, so please stay tuned. We will update you regularly through GameFound updates, Leo's lives on Wednesday night, and my Q&As on Fridays. We'll occasionally visit the comments section of the GameFound page, but the best way to reach out is either to visit those lives, or if you have any questions, you can ask our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net. Our wonderful customer service team makes sure that no email remains unanswered, with our usual response time being around five business days. One final note, the four remaining sea monster miniatures, the huge crab, the battle-scarred whale, the great white shark, and the kraken would make no sense as a separate add-on in the pledge manager. So, we will be unlocking them and adding them to the Grim Harvest uh, because simply you got so close to the target. Now, Leo originally made this announcement during his final live to close out the campaign, but we're putting this in writing here so that you can spread the word. Thank you all so much once again, and we'll be back very soon with more updates. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show because, frankly, you just never know what Leo is going to do. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my other two videos, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday. And that's it for today, though. Once again, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.